Hello and welcome. This is a quick video tutorial on Final Cut Pro. Uh, for those of you who already had the Final Cut Pro induction, uh, but just want a quick refresher. Uh, first things first, if you look at the top right hand corner of your screen, you'll notice there's two drives, one that says system and one that says data. Okay, Where do we save our work? Well, we always save our files in the data drive. We never save it in the system or on the desktop Okay, because they'll be deleted at the end of the day. Okay, So if you double click the data drive, that opens up a new window. You probably find that there's other uh, folders in there, people's uh, people's work. Okay, uh, this is where you create yourself your own folder. So if you go to top right hand corner of the screen uh, on on the toolbar where it says Finder, if you go to File and choose New Folder, okay, uh, you should be able to type in your name, uh, type in your full name. That much it makes it a bit more easier to see. Okay, and hit Enter. So that's your folder, um, that's where everything is going to go and we're going to use Final Cut Pro uh, and set the scratch disks to this folder. Okay, But yeah, I do recommend that you buy yourselves a portable hard drive. Let's close this window, Command W to close the window and let's open up Final Cut. To open up Final Cut Pro you go to the system drive, so if you double click system and then go to applications. Just double click that. You'll find that Final Cut Pro is this icon here with the um, little clapperboard. Uh, if you double click that, that should load up. Okay. First time you load up Final Cut Pro, you'll be presented with this two setup window where it says format. Click the uh, scroll bar and choose PAL. Where it says use, click on the scroll bar and you've got many other different options for PAL uh, but the one I'd recommend that you use is basically two, two options here. It's either DV PAL or DV PAL anamorphic. Um, if you remember if you uh, when you were recording on the DV camera like the XM2, the Canon XM2, um, you can either shoot 16.9 or 4.3. Okay, so if you shot 16.9, choose this option, anamorphic. That's basically widescreen. Or otherwise, if you haven't shot that in that format, choose DV PAL. Okay, but never choose NTSC. Okay, that's the American format. Uh, but I'm going to choose DV PAL because I got some DV PAL anamorphic because I shot uh, some films uh, in widescreen that we're going to use. Okay, so click select that. Most importantly, where it says primary scratch disk. You need to click on the scroll bar and click choose folder. Okay, you'll be presented with a, a dialog uh, with a window box here. On the left hand side is a directory of the computer. Uh, if you select your data drive, select your folder in the data drive, so double click your data drive and choose your folder. Basically, just choose the folder that you created earlier. Okay, there's my folder and click choose. Okay, so this basically, this area here should tell you where your files are going to go. So if I click OK, uh, sometimes you'll be presented with a, an external AV uh, dialog box, unable to locate the following external devices. Okay, what well, that basically means is the computer is looking for a, a DV deck or a DV camera, uh, and you'd have this connected by a firewire cable. Uh, don't worry for, about this for now. When it comes to log and capture, you do have to connect a, a DV camera. Uh, to the computer to capture your tapes, uh, but just for now, just click continue. Okay, so this is Final Cut Pro. It's basically divided into four uh, primary windows. Uh, you've got the browser, uh, which is uh, also uh, indicated by the uh, the top top bar. Each window has a top bar which uh, indicates uh, what it is. Okay, so you've got the browser, you've got the viewer, you've got the canvas uh, sequence screen, and then you've got the timeline. And then you've got two sort of secondary windows uh, the tool bar uh, and also the audio meters palette. Okay. First things first, whenever you load up Final Cut Pro, it's best to check two things. Um, 
if you click on Final Cut Pro top left, uh, two things to check is system settings and easy setup. Okay, these are the two things that I recommend that you check before you start uh, proceeding with your with your editing. Okay, uh, system settings. Uh, if you click on that, because at the startup when we loaded up Final Cut Pro for the first time, uh, we set the primary scratch disk to the correct folder. Uh, this should all be set to that folder. And this is just to double check that this first row here is going into the folder that, that you created, the folder that you want your files to be saved in. Okay, And this is, will be on the data drive or your portable hard drive. So make sure that this first row, um, that all these little boxes have been checked and they're linked to the correct um, folder. Uh, which they should have been because you've already set that up in the choose setup window. Sometimes if you accidentally skip that choose setup window uh, just by pressing OK and haven't actually allocated or chosen a format, then you probably need to set uh, your, your system settings, your scratch disks. And to do that you just click on set and then navigate to the data drive or your portable hard drive and select your folder okay and you don't have to worry about these other rows here below um, we're just saving our stuff to one hard drive basically uh, but do make sure that these uh, settings here waveform cache thumbnail cache and auto save vault are set to the same folder okay and then all you do is click ok on that next thing next thing to check is Go back into Final Cut Pro and uh, choose Easy Setup. Um, this is where you can choose the format. Uh, again, it's basically uh, a second chance uh, to set everything right just in case you bypass the Choose Setup window uh, when you load up Final Cut Pro. Okay, so I've already chosen PAL and I've chosen DB PAL Anamorphic. So that's already set up. Um, next thing to do is there are several ways to. Uh, bring footage in, uh, into the browser to start editing. If you're using a DB PAL camera, you're, you'd be linking up the video camera via a firewire cable. And so long as the firewire cable is working and uh, everything's okay, then you can go to File, Log and Capture. Uh, the same applies if you're using a HDV video camera, um, you use Log and Capture. If you click on Log and Capture, that should load up a, a separate um, window called Log and Capture. Okay. Uh, the next thing you can do is, if you look here in the, this is the preview screen. Underneath is your playback controls. Press play. You should be able to activate the video camera. Okay, so the idea when it comes to log and capture is you, pre you press play and then when you're ready to capture, you press this button here, capture now. Okay. So if I just rewind that a little bit to get the start of that, you can actually use this slider here uh, to shuttle backwards and forwards. I'm just going to go back a little bit. Hit the play button. Where I want to capture my video. I press the capture now button and what that does as soon as you press the now button you get a pre another sort of preview display box uh, and what's happening is your video that's playing on the camera is actually being captured on the computer's hard drive okay. at the moment you can't really hear anything um, but you can actually preview your sound back um, if you're worried about the quality, don't worry, it's actually because it's just a, sort of like a preview display. It's not sh actually showing your film in full quality. So all we do is we're just capturing, capture as much footage as you want. Uh, but, you know, uh, I recommend that you be selective because as you capture, it does eat up uh, hard drive space. So I'll just capture this little bit here of these two characters running down the tunnel. Once you're happy and you, you've finished, you've got all the shots that you want, um, if you press escape and keep your finger on it, 
that should stop the capturing process. 